Alright, Bismillah. Sheikh Uthman, Jazakallah for coming. Wallahi, it means so much that you spent time out of your day to come. I know, Musa, I've been texting Musa back and forth these past couple of weeks. MashaAllah. Yeah, I know. And he told me that you were like extremely busy, but we were able to figure some time out. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm flying tomorrow to the UK, so we have the tour coming up. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, he told but, me this. Uh, Musa, Musa was on me. He was like, you got to do this. So Alhamdulillah, <laughs> we're here. So for everybody who doesn't know, you are my first like sort of big guest on my on my show i want to make that, yeah and it's, i'm not i'm not that big man don't worry i know i know but no but I'm in my best. eyes like because i've been watching you for a long time and you've helped me in a lot it's of ways like so lot, it's like uh, it's 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 helped me a lot and it's crazy seeing you here on my on my podcast show but just again jazakallah for coming i met sheikh Uthman in dallas I, I talked to him in dallas and then we were able yeah. to somehow get on so now we have 30 minutes so i'm so i want to just get to know you one-on-one -on -one personally because I see you all the time on YouTube and Go everything. So I want I have a lot of questions I want to ask and I want to get to know you. So number one, I was doing a lot of, I could say so well, research about you. And okay. I was listening to the podcast you did with Sneeko, I think. There was one big yeah. podcast where you guys were in a big room with Qurans everywhere. And I was- I, it's, my, I, it's my library. Your library, yes, that's your library. And yeah. I was so interested because you have so much of this I guess you could say you have so many views online on YouTube. You have you're getting recognized in a lot of places. Yet your the way you were brought up, your childhood, nobody knows about that, and it was very interesting to see. So, how was that your childhood like, and growing up in the place where you were at? Uh, that's a good question. So I was born in Pakistan. Uh, alhamdulillah, uh, my family is from Peshawar up north, from Pashtuns, but I was born in Islamabad, and I moved to the UK when I was very young, like around five, six years of age. And I was in the UK for like a year and a half or two years, something like that. Um, you know, I had a lot of family in the UK. I still do, alhamdulillah. Yeah. And then I moved to the US when I was eight, nine years old, something like that, in the early 80s. And it was rough, you know, because the US was, well, I mean, not all the US, but Southern California in the early 80s, late 80s, 90s was rough. This is yeah. when the gang yeah. uh, violence was really a lot in yeah. the 80s when the when crack hit the streets. So, yeah, yeah. Um, my parents didn't really know about good neighborhoods and bad neighborhoods and ghettos and barrios. They just thought the U.S., you know, like yeah. the image of the U.S. around the world was like yep. everything is just great. So uh, I went to like a school like in the really, really bad neighborhoods. And uh, subhanAllah, I mean, in the, you know, I walked in with like a suit on the first day of school, elementary school, you know. Yeah. And, my mom, you know, she took care of me. I mean, my parents were divorced, so I was raised with my mom. And my mom, like, you know, she was like, make sure you're very proper when introduce yourself. Yeah. You know, and I had a British accent because I just lived in the UK. Oh, wow. So I walked in, I'm like, hello, my name is Usman, you know. And it was in the rough neighborhood, so, yeah, so I learned how to fight real quick. Yeah. Um, and it was rough. I mean, growing up was a rough time because... There was gangs, there was violence, there was drugs, there was yeah. all kinds of stuff. And uh, my middle school, Wilson Middle School in East San Diego, got shot up. Like we had a drive by at my yeah, I heard about school. that. Yeah, I know. It's... Yeah, it's crazy. You know, so uh, it was a rough, uh, you know, time of life. Uh, a lot of lot of friends that we had to bury, and you know, being a teenager, that's a very uh, it's not usual. You know? Yeah. So for uh, me, for ex oh, I'm about to continue. Okay. No, I was gonna say for me, for example. I wasn't born in that. I'm very privileged. Yeah. I'm very lucky. But alhamdulillah. yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But I was having a discussion with my friend and we had this sort of topic where people that were sort of born in the environment that you were born in, you you guys have like mentally are, are different, I guess you could say. So how has that like... <laughs> we're scarred. <laughs> I guess, I guess. But you guys had to fight at a young age. You guys had to really fight yeah. yourself mentally, right? So how has that sort of, I guess you could say, helped you in a way? I mean, of course, uh, we say Alhamdulillah ala kulli hal for every condition, whether you're in a rough neighborhood or a good neighborhood, everybody has their yeah. own challenges. Um, you know, of course, being raised with a lot of adversity, a lot of uh, trauma, a lot of violence kind of toughens you in a way. So yeah. when a lot of uh, du'at might get scared of giving da'wah in a rough, like we just came back from Chicago yeah. and we were giving da'wah in old block, like in the worst part of south chicago yeah wow videos will be posted soon musa is working on those so uh so it was you know the areas where like like you know when we were down there the police came to us and they were like you guys shouldn't be here you know the 
Mormons, Christians, everybody's scared to come down here. And we were like, not us, you know, we're not scared of anything there, alhamdulillah. So a lot of times, like, you know, we, I know I went to a city and they were like, we used to have da'wah and we shut it down. I was like, why? They said somebody threw something at us. I was like, did they attack you? They were like, no, just threw something. Yeah. Like, why would you stop because of that? And they were like, no, no, it could, it could be dangerous. And we're like, yeah, forget all that, man. You get attacked, you get, you know, people come at me in the park, you can see the videos with knives and all kinds of stuff. And we still keep going because, you know, being raised in that environment, right, we, we thought that, okay, like at that time, people would die over the name of a street or a color or a gang or a neighborhood when they really didn't own the neighborhood. They didn't own the street, like yeah. 18th Street or yeah. people rep these, you know, like people like blood with red. Yeah. Like it's not like they own the color red or yeah. Crips with blue, you know, they... They die over nothing. Yeah. And for us, when we're Muslims, upon the haqq, upon the truth, upon tawheed, then how can we be afraid uh, of anything? You know. So, I mean, if we die, we become shuhada, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, I think that kind of uh, toughened me up in that way. So, that did help. And then also, I mean, we grew up with people that had to survive on streets. So, you had to be, you had to have street smarts. You knew how to get out of situations and how to deal with different people. And, um, you know, it's not just violence, right? I mean, yeah. to survive in that kind of a neighborhood, it's not just about being strong because you could be strong and fight, but then you will wear yourself out and there's always going to be somebody stronger or two, three guys that will jump you. Or mm. So you had to learn how to like deal with people and relate to people and be yeah. able to uh, survive in politically, right? Yeah. Not, I mean, our school was like prison. You know, there was the blacks, there was the Mexicans, there was the whites and there was each gang had its own area and for you to get from class to your lunch area you kind of had to negotiate your way through because wow. you couldn't just be fighting every day yeah so uh you know it was rough uh, alhamdulillah and then but it it did definitely mold me in many ways too mashallah so i was reading something that was very interesting you said when you were a kid you used to go to churches a lot yeah yeah right um my my parents were very liberal in a sense, so they we never went to a masjid. I didn't know any Muslims growing up, mm. uh, but my parents were Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. They they but they never really took me to a masjid or a madrasa or Quran class or Sunday Quran or nothing like that. Mm. Uh, all my friends were non-Muslims, mostly Mexicans, uh, like ninety something percent, and they were either Catholics or Christians. So because they were gang members as well, their parents would send them to church, try to see if that can help them. And then I would be, you know, spending that at their house. I'd be with them. So I'd go with them. Uh, but of course, it didn't make sense. Like when I was reading the Bible with yeah. them and they did yeah. Bible studies, uh, they didn't care. Like my friends didn't care. They weren't trying to pay attention. They were just like, whatever. I would be the only one that would actually be reading. And I wasn't even Christian, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. I'd be like, hey, pastor, like this passage contradicts one we read yesterday uh, yep he'd be like he'd be like Shh, shut up <laughs> and if i kept asking questions it would kick me out. Kick you um, out so that's what i was saying because back then you were going to churches and now you're like debunking every christian that comes and tries to debate you it's yeah. insane so did you like always i would say have that mindset at an early age when going into the churches like this doesn't make sense how does this that work or i mean I didn't really go to debate. And yeah, I didn't really yeah. go to debunk. Um, I, I just wanted to learn, but it just didn't make sense. You know, yeah. I mean, like when I read, for example, two different ages for the same king, I would be like, hey, that doesn't make sense. This yeah. You can't have rolled twice for one year. And the pastor would just be like, that's not important. You know, yeah. and they'd be like, well, it is important because if we're learning a lie, then I'm not going to bet my akhir on it. Right. Yeah. Um, when I would ask questions like, okay, if Jesus was God, then in this verse, when he's praying to God, who's he praying to? And then they would just get upset and be like, you know, stop asking questions. I've seen that just, so just many believe. times in your videos. Every time somebody says that, you pull that up because it strengthens yeah, me yeah. too. It strengthens your iman whenever you see like a... Yeah, of course. Well, like, alhamdulillah, yeah. when I started studying the Quran, I was the first time I was really satisfied because I didn't see contradictions. I didn't no see contract. those kind of fallacies. I didn't find credal errors i was really like okay this is the truth this is what i've been waiting for 
Alhamdulillah. 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 So, did you always want to become a person of knowledge or a sheikh at a young age, or was this something? That... Oh, I mean, at a young age, I didn't know what a sheikh was. You know, ah. I, was, I was in the hood. You know, yeah. Uh, I, I literally would not have known what the word sheikh meant. I didn't know what the word hadith. Meant. I knew what Quran was, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would not have known what the word hadith means. I was that mm. far away. Uh, but when I came to Islam when I was about 18, when I made my own decision, like, you know, my parents were like, okay, we're Muslim. But at 18, I was like, this is this is what I'm about. This is Islam, right? Then, alhamdulillah, I mean, even without my parents' support, I started really going down that path. I mean, Allah reward my mother. She always supported me, alhamdulillah. And uh, Alhamdulillah, later when I got married, Alhamdulillah, my wife and kids, Alhamdulillah, they've always been very supportive of the da'wah. As you can see, Musa's yeah. involved in the da'wah, Yusuf's involved in the da'wah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, so when I first came to Islam, my father told me something very interesting. He said, you know, don't half step anything. You know, If you're going to be bad, be really bad. Don't be like a wannabe. If you want to be good, be really good. Like, go all the way, you know. His Pashtun mindset is a little bit crazy. So... You know, when I came to Islam, I said, that's it, man. I'm going to like, I'm going to try to, I didn't say I want to be a sheikh, but I mm. said, I want to really study Islam. I want to love it. I want to buy books. I want to read. I want to learn Arabic. And you know, it was hard because I was starting from scratch, you know, like people I went to the masjid with, they already knew how to read Quran. They already knew basics. So I had to catch up, you know, so I would be sitting in the madrasa with little kids, you know. I was like, but wow. I, I never, I never made excuses. I never let it like hold me back. I just, you know, alhamdulillah, I went overseas. I studied Arabic, I studied Nahu and Sarf and Balagha and alhamdulillah, I went to Pakistan, studied Tafsir, Hadith and so on. And I'm still a student and I'm still learning. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You're still learning a lot. So what was the first, I guess you could say, steps that you took when you wanted to go and start learning the deen because there's a lot of people that do want to learn it but they don't know the first steps mm -hmm. and someone like you how you said that a lot of your peers the people around you were ahead of you how did you mm -hmm. sort of not let that demotivate you and who was sort of guiding you throughout the whole process or was it just you i mean a lot of the guide a lot guided yeah. me uh but i i reached out to certain shiuch, uh certain scholars there was a sheikh i was over here in the u.s at the time may allah have mercy on him he passed away um, he gave me the first few books to read and kind of guided me. And I had some friends that I became uh, close to that also were interested in knowledge. Um, when I went overseas, I studied with Sheikh, like Sheikh Dr. Sadiq Al-Manna, who was Sudani, very great scholar, great guide. He helped me a lot. And when I went to Pakistan, I met some really great scholars. Sheikh Abdul Salam Rustami, rahmatullahi alayhi, passed away. Great Mufassir of the Quran. Uh, Sheikh Abu Muhammad Aminullah, may Allah protect him. So these scholars, they kind of started giving me guidance. Uh, Sheikh yeah. Abdul Rahman, Muhammad Bashir in Islamabad and the Mahad al al Arabiya and stuff, so on. So then I would I would ask them about different books and different subjects, and um, I would complete certain mutun like Ajrumiya and so on, and then I would move on to the next one like Al Fiya. Um, Alhamdulillah, and like that, I mean, I had already. So, gone back to school in the u.s and got my bachelor's in computer science and my oh, okay. executive mba so then when i was in pakistan i signed in through an mfo program through the islamic university there so i got my master's in hadith from there and inshallah i'm planning on doing my phd someday inshallah. Uh, Allah make it easy for all of us inshallah. but like I, I like learning you know i like knowing i like uh the bible stuff that are that i'm more known for is, is very small fraction of my studies i mean i like to study quran and hadith and tafsir and fiqh and um, for those that are interested in studying i mean if you can find a good local scholar that can really teach you with evidences on the quran and the sunnah no selling out kind of thing then that's great you know um, if you cannot we have playlists we've made for people to be able to study from anywhere in the world free of charge don't have to sign up for anything so uh, on youtube like on the one message foundation channel You'll find more of the da'wah videos, but on the Masjid Ribat channel, which is my Masjid channel, you will find durus like aqidah and fiqh and mustalal hadith, science of judging hadith and the life of the Prophet sallallahu in the light of authentic hadith. Those are all on there. So you can go there and literally go through like an Islamic syllabus without even leaving the comfort of your home and without paying a penny or signing up for anything. Wow, that's, that's, that's interesting. The fact you do it for free shows a lot about 
you guys are, yeah alhamdulillah. i don't get paid by omf i don't get paid by my masjid i don't yeah. charge for teaching i don't charge for dawah i work a regular job like i just came back from work right now oh, wow. um, you know i earn my risk for my wife and my kids and my family to uh, that allah puts the, the barakah in the risk and then whatever i do for islam i do a fee sabi yeah a lot of people i feel like they don't realize this how much like free stuff you put out and how much you genuinely do it for the sake of wanting to help people so yeah. with that did where did you i wanted to ask this question where did you learn how to debate and how to really like give I, I never to people? Really, <laughs> i never really learned how to debate uh, i never took classes i never watched uh, like dr zakir naik growing up or something yeah. or Ahmed Didab. I mean, I knew who they were, but I wasn't like one of those avid watchers of their debates. Yeah. Um, I watched some uh, Ahmadi Dad stuff. I watched such like a night here and there, but never like, I didn't really like try to fashion my style after them. To be honest, I just went out in the street and talked to people, you know, and um, I started out giving da'wah just in really bad neighborhoods to people that I thought were lost and in need of da'wah, uh, drug dealers, gang members, yeah. pimps, prostitutes, crazy hood people homeless yeah. people and in the course of that you would get challenged by these christians right but i had already studied the bible i mean i didn't go to study the bible to debate yeah. um I, I had already had a bible since i was young and i had highlighted and marked it up and so when they came at me with the debates i would just be like oh yeah let me go get my bible and then i'd be like look at this and then they'd be like <laughs> like as yeah. if they've never seen it before um and that's that's really how it kind of went on and i mean the rest was just experience you know dealing with people on the streets uh you know i mean the, the bible debates the debates with jews and atheists it's nothing new i mean we've been doing it since the late 90s yeah so, you've been doing it for um, a while yeah so alhamdulillah then allah just guides so because one thing i wanted to uh, let you know in the ways you've helped me is my school i'm not someone who like who's amazing at giving da'wah or something i'm a regular regular student i just i do all the basic stuff read quran and all that learn a little bit here and there my school does this interesting thing where they have sort of like the da'wah booth that you do and they'll have a bunch of cookies laid out and they'll say nice. ask a, ask a question get a free cookie about islam and nice. i've yeah so I, that was my first time into like sort of getting into that world of giving da'wah. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I didn't know how to properly give it. But when I would learn how to properly speak to people, learn how to actually communicate to people when it comes to Islam, a lot of your videos would help me a lot with that. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. yeah so, so this is why we post the videos. It's really for training for others, yeah, you know. Yeah. We don't make money off YouTube. We're not trying to, you know, use ad revenue or any of that kind of stuff. The whole point is so that people like yourself around the world can get that experience without having the hardship yeah. of being on the street for, you know, 10 years. So I'm, I'm really happy to hear that it helped yeah. you in your da'wah. Wallah, even though I've only done it like two or three times because they only, they they've only done it two or three times, it helped me a lot in how to deal with people and how to like talk to someone who's interested in Islam, you know? And again, I'm, like I said, I'm not perfect, but th those videos have helped a lot. So my... Amen. Yeah. Allah bless you and increase you in your goodness. I mean, I mean. So my next one, my next question basically was, how did you, did you expect yourself to grow this tremendously over the past couple of years or was it something you were like i'm gonna just do it if it happens it happens you yeah know? it definitely wasn't expecting it and uh, <laughs> so uh didn't plan for it um basically we would go out and give that one the streets and then we got a table and some bro brothers before me mashallah really kind of organized it and i would just go and join them and one of the brothers brother mukarram may allah reward him um he was he's the amir of omf and he was like you know what we should record you and i was like why would anybody want to watch me like talk to people about islam yeah. it's like boring as heck you know like i'm not flashy i don't you know there's no music in our videos we blur women so i mean nobody's gonna watch it and he was like no it's gonna be good for people to learn so we're like okay so we posted a few and then uh, we had one guy he reached out to us and he was like hey we saw some of your videos it's good stuff but what you got to do is you got to wait for the best looking girl to come to your table and take a picture and use that as your thumbnail. And we were like, nah, nah that's not what we're about. You know, we, we just want to give da'wah for the sake of Allah. We're not trying to get views or subscribers yeah. or any of yeah. that. So he was like, well, if you blur your video and nobody's ever going to watch it, we're like, all right, well, I guess nobody's going to watch it. It's all right. We're not going to violate Sharia. Yeah. So uh, we just went on like 
Quran and Sunnah, like straight up. And alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us. It, it blew up, you know. Um, I mean, most of the stuff that went viral wasn't even us trying, you know. Like when those three clowns came to debate me, we yeah. had no idea. You know, they, yeah. they just showed up and it just put us on the map. And then after that, I mean, when we got attacked or all that, I mean, everything was just fell into place and Allah protected us and Allah gave us that growth that alhamdulillah now we're like, I think, uh, half a million subscribers, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think 500,000 yeah. subscribers. Yeah, you guys are growing tremendously and it's amazing. So how do you, when somebody comes and I, first of all, I can't control my emotions the way you do when I see the videos that you do. How, when somebody comes up to you, I've seen one where you were literally at um, the speaker's corner in UK. Some guy comes yeah. yelling, brother, brother, I'm here to debate you. I'm like, how do you control that? How do you control that like argument pace where the person tries to interrupt you and you go, no, we're in an argument. I speak you. Like, how do you, like, how does that happen? Yeah. How do you? It's not easy, right? You're right. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult because people come at you all wrong. People interrupt you. And, and as you can see in the videos, I get interrupted the whole time. And I'm all like, the okay, time. Look, yeah. when you speak, I'll listen. When I speak, you listen. And you try to have that conversation because we're not there to argue. We're not there yeah. to debate. We're there to give da'wah. Yeah. So we really want to understand what they're saying and then explain to them and hope that Allah guides us all to the truth. And um, like in the speaker's corner, the guy was like sweating, like it was like winter, you know, it was yeah. cold, I was wearing a jacket, like I was like sweating like crazy. <laughs> and he was like that far from me, but he's yelling, you know, and I'm like, why are you yelling? Like I'm right here, you know? And and that's the thing is that for them, it's a show, you know, but for us, it's it's a conversation. We're not yeah. there for show, you know? And, you know, the guy was like, give me contemporary, you know? I just, yeah, just I saw that. It contemporary was... that day, you know? evidence of Uthman and Omar and I'm like, what? Like, like, you know, there's just letters that they wrote, there's, there's, you know, artifacts you can get in museums. And it's like, no, contemporary, contemporary. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, like, okay, give me contemporary evidence of Musa, alayhi salam, Ibrahim, alayhi salam. Then he's like, no, no, no. You know, so, so it just doesn't make sense. You know, a lot of these guys are so pathetic because they, they don't have anything against the Quran. They, they, they gave up on hadith. So they just bring like random weird stuff, you know, and then you just got to put them in your place, you know, and be like, look, you know, you want to discuss, here are the rules. You listen, I'm going to speak, I listen, you're going to speak, we're going to make progress. And yeah. Stop yelling and spitting on me, you know, yeah. you're all up in my grill, you know. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, one, so, speaking of like emotions and getting really high, there is this one big story about you, which I read, which absolutely broke my heart, was you were giving dawah and some guy attacked you with a knife. And I remember my me and one of my friend, he's a big fan of you. I think he flew all the way to UK to see you once. I think you were giving a speech or something. Yeah. And I was like, what the heck? What is this? And then you literally like when I saw the video, I was like, you are like mentally just on a whole nother level. I'm not scared of anything, not scared of everyone. But my question is, how did that sort of did that affect you in any way? Or were you just like, this makes me stronger? Yeah, yeah we just keep going. I mean, we got attacked twice. One was when we were giving down. The videos online, yeah, uh, by this guy who had a metal baton and a knife. Yeah, and the second time was I wasn't even giving that of downtown San Diego. Uh, but again, for us it doesn't matter. And like I said, I mean, when I was growing up, I saw people get killed over the names of streets and yeah. stuff. And yeah, if they were if they were patient on that, how are we going to be scared? You know? Yeah. Um, it didn't. The, the the day I got attacked, the next day I went out and gave that one and made a video saying, "Look, we're gonna I remember. Yeah. keep going. Yeah, we're not stopping, and whatever they want to do, they can do." But uh, you know, until we become shahada, we're gonna keep with the da'wah, alhamdulillah. And if Allah accepts us for shahada, yeah, uh, I remember seeing that video. You're like, we're not stopping no matter what, we're still gonna go. I was like, that's such a boss move because a lot of people would have just been like, no, 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 it's and that's a smart thing to do. <laughs> I got attacked to not go, but you were like, nope, I must still continue going. <laughs> I was like, uh, the smart thing to do is not always the right thing to do, you know. True, true, you gotta, true. You gotta, you gotta be stubborn with it, yeah. And I yeah. think a lot of people they try to like. I don't know why I see this, but I feel like they try messing with you sometimes. Like, I remember I saw this one kid. I know it went viral. He came in, tried to do a little Indian yeah. accent, and he didn't know who yeah. he was messing with. I was like, bro, do you not, like, think or anything? Yeah, before? So this this kid, we were at the park, and this kid just saw us, like, you know, dressed like this. Yeah. He must have assumed we're, like, some foreigner or something. So he, he was, like, a regular kid. Like, you could hear him talking regular English. And then when he came, I was like, what are you doing? That's yeah. Amazing. And I was like, oh. I was talking to somebody else, actually, but I heard him talking to one of our brothers, trying to with that fake accent. And I'd heard him speaking regular English before that. So then I was like, look, we're not playing around with man. Yeah. You know, you want a Quran, take a Quran. You want to learn about Islam, good. Although, you try to play tricks like that, I'll knock you out. 
and, uh, and then he became know, real quiet <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah then he walked away you know so then uh, and then he had his little friend group that he was trying to impress i walked up to all of them i was like look you guys got a problem step up you know but they weren't they weren't about it you know they were just they were just trying to be funny but they didn't realize we're not we're not here to be joked with you know we don't we don't play like that alhamdulillah you know we 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 treat we treat people with respect, but you know if you come at us wrong, then it's gonna hundred percent. I I hundred percent agree with you with that, and I think it's amazing how you stand your ground and don't let anybody come and push you around. Um, one onto the next topic, which I wanted to ask you about. A lot of people, when I told them I'm doing this with you, everybody was asking me to ask you about this. Everybody, ask away. Sneeko. <laughs> All my <laughs> friends, everybody. Sheikh with bad. Sneeko, Sneeko, Sneeko. I was trying to come up with questions. I had a bunch. I was like, let me ask a couple of my friends. All of them said, ask him about Sneeko. Ask him about Sneeko. I was like, okay, I'll ask him a couple questions. Not not too much. Sneeko, every lot of kids I watch him, he has a lot of attention. He has a good fan base. How did you sort of help him into writing into Islam? Sort of how you in the beginning was oh. sort of getting around to Islam. Did you see a similarity or something? Uh, I think we came from different worlds. I mean, okay. he was a model. I was a gang member. Not exactly <laughs> the same background. But of course, I mean, um, everybody has those questions in mind. Uh, the first time, I had no idea who Sneeko was. I had no idea who Andrew Tate was. I, I don't really watch a lot of stuff online, so it's not my thing. Uh, one day, me and Musa were actually at the park, and my daughters were playing. And uh, the three Muslim guys that have a podcast. They, they, they called me and said, hey, there's this guy named Young Don, and he's a Christian guy, and he yeah. wants to say some things. And uh, he, I don't think they even mentioned Sneeko, but they, they were like, he's got some questions, if you can jump on. I was like, yeah, no problem. I mean, I wasn't ready. I just It was just my fault. I didn't have a mic. I didn't have lighting, nothing. I, I just literally just regular phone, not even like a headphones and stuff. Yeah, you know? I remember. So, yeah, <laughs> I jumped on, and, uh, you know, Sneeko was there, and I had no idea who he was but at that time, you know. And, you know, Young Don had some questions, and uh we answered the questions and you know it was kind of aggressive a little bit yeah um and alhamdulillah i mean young don uh, shout out to young don for uh he has the the thing we were talking about jesus being god he actually now does not believe jesus is god and he actually uses the same verse that i had mentioned to him during that uh, and, and me and him are having conversations offline he just messaged me the other day where me him and sneak are talking and we want everybody to make dua that allah guides them and yeah um, Sneeko was there that day and he, he was a witness to the debate and he wasn't Muslim at the time but uh, as he said you know that was one of the times when it really hit him and helped him kind of uh, see the truth of Islam yeah, yeah. so after that I mean uh, we were you know he kind of we went on our own different ways but mm. uh, that was like kind of motivated him and then he accepted Islam in his heart and things uh, and then he reached out to me and he said if you could come to San Diego and visit me and I was like yeah no problem you know you're a guest so alhamdulillah, like he booked his own ticket, he pays on hotel, like we, we, you know, he, he, it was from his side, he came and then, you know, we took him around, we took him shooting, we took him to the masjid, you know, we, yeah. uh, you know, fun stuff, uh, yeah. sat in my library, we did some podcasts and he did yeah. his official shahada here in San Diego with yeah. me. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know, he's, he's doing good, May Allah protect him. Um, he is going to be joining us in the UK for the tour, so you'll see him in the masajid with me and and the durus and the da'wah. So if you're in the UK, mm -hmm. if you're coming, uh, you'll see him, inshallah. Inshallah. And, uh, you know, uh, life is a struggle. I mean, I'm sure he's going through his own personal struggles. And, yeah. You know, uh, alhamdulillah, he doesn't drink anymore. He doesn't hit the clubs anymore. He doesn't fornicate and things, as far as I know, as far as he tells me, Allah knows the best. Yeah. Um, he tries his prayers. When he was here, he was learning wudu. He was learning salah. He, uh, you know, he was, uh, of course, it's a struggle. Uh, but, you know, when he was in Thailand, he called me up. He was like, look, let me connect me to some of the Muslim brothers out there. So I don't want to be in the wrong environment. Yeah. So I gave him some numbers and alhamdulillah, they, were, they did good. So, uh, you know, uh, Allah protect him and guide him and protect us and guide us and keep him on the right path and keep us on the right path. Yeah, it's beautiful seeing somebody who has like all that clout, all that fame, yet it doesn't like fulfill happiness in his heart you know what i mean yeah, and only true. islam brings like peace and happiness we've seen people like andrew tate he converted as well so many other celebrities not just them too so many so many different celebrities convert but what is your thoughts on seeing people like what if there's a celebrity watching right now and he really wants to find a higher purpose in life find something that isn't isn't just just worldly materials and stuff like that what would your personal advice be to him and how he should I guess you could say come closer to Islam or just come closer to God. 
That's great. So, I mean, whether they're celebrities or common folks, it doesn't really matter to me. Everybody's a human being in the end, and everybody in the end is in need of guidance. Um, you know, people need to think about what is the purpose of life. If it's just about money and wealth and things, then Andrew Tate had all that, Sneeko had all that, other people had all that, and it didn't bring them contentment, right? But when you truly submit yourself to your creator, not halfway, not you know, still trying to please your desires. When you say, okay, Islam is, is what I'm about and I'm a Muslim, Muslims means I submit, then you will find that contentment, right? Then you would yeah. like, like they did, right? You will find that purpose. And then, you know, but it has to be something from you. You know, you, you have to, it's not like, okay, I'm going to sit around and like, bring it to me. You know, you uh -huh. have to struggle, you have to strive. And, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, what else, the pressures of society and all that, you have to leave all that alone. In the end, Remember, this life is terminal, right? Yeah. I mean, you're going to die and you're going to go back to your creator. And then there is an everlasting life that depends on how you use this life, right? Mm. If you waste this opportunity that Allah has given us and you just chase tail and money and fame, yeah, you might get it or you might not. But in the end, you'll be in a grave and all that money and fame and women and men or whatever is not going to help you anymore. Yeah. But when you, when you have that true purpose of islam the true contentment of the heart then even in the world you're going to do good as muslims we don't sit around crying in corners or something yeah. no alhamdulillah we get married we have kids we have houses we drive nice cars i mean it's not like allah has made those things haram on us yeah but at the same time we don't make that our purpose so that yeah. we know our higher purpose yeah and then you know when you when you when you die you don't have that fear upon you when you when you're raised on the day of judgment you're you're shrouded by the Arsh of Allah by the throne, uh, you know, the seven types of people as mentioned in the hadith. And then, you know, when you're saved from the hellfire and you enter paradise, that that there is the true a true theory. success, mm. uh, a never ending success uh, forever and ever, you know, no sickness, no death. That That's what it's all about, you know, getting yeah. back to where our true home is. Hmm. with with our creator in heaven yeah why do you think a lot of people don't realize this when they're for example i've seen people live 30 40 50 years they have all this fame and money but this is what one sentence that you said that there's a higher purpose and we're going to die why do you think it never really hits in, into someone's brain well the world has been made to distract right the prophet yeah. وسلم, told us in the authentic narration that allah SWT created heaven jannah and surrounded it with hardships and he created hellfire and surrounded it with desires, right? So it's a longer duration with Jibreel, I said, yeah. but just as the point here is that people get caught up in their desires, right? Mm -hmm. People are like fame, fame, fame. That's all they worry about until they get it. And then they're like, oh, this wasn't all that. You know, <laughs> people are like money, money, money until you get it. And then you're like, okay, whatever. And some people never get it. They die in that struggle, right? But the more intelligent of us, take a step back from the rat race, from the matrix or whatever, and start thinking, okay, what, what, what is the real goal for my existence? And then we go back to the Quran, مَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, بَعْدَ عَدُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ That I did not create jinn or ins except for my worship. Yeah. Huh? Allah says in Surah Al-Mulk, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا <laughs> I mean, that Allah created death and life to see which one of you puts forth the best of deeds. So the intelligent person takes a step back from the rat race and just the, you know, clubs and distractions because the world is there to distract you, right? All those pleasures are there to distract you. Hmm. But the intelligent person doesn't get distracted. You know, you know the, the famous story of the uh, turtle and the, and the hare, right? Yeah. The, the rabbit and the turtle, right? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. The, the turtle was all slow. The rabbit was fast, but he got distracted, right? And the turtle made it, you know, so that's the thing. A lot of people may be really smart. They may be good at what they do. They may be good basketball players or good actors or all that. But are they intelligent enough to take a step back and look at the higher purpose in life? Uh, it depends. And if they're watching, then, you know, we, we advise them that. Go read the Quran, go watch some of our videos, the One Message Foundation, and see what we are about. Inshallah, that Allah guides all those people, uh, you know, those that are sincere. Allah will make a way for them. Like Sneeko or Andrew Tate, like you couldn't even imagine them becoming Muslims in the world of filth and, you know, you know, distractions that they lived in. But whatever sincerity they had in their heart, Allah opened the ways of guidance for them.
Chef, I have one last question. I know you're tired. I don't want to give you. Hey, no, no, go for it. My last question is, or I guess you could say two questions. Through, I'm 20 years old. A lot of kids my age will be watching this because that's my demographic. What would be your advice through all the years you've been on this earth to someone like me and to all the kids or people watching? My advice is a beautiful advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And this hadith was reported by Mu'ad ibn Jabal, also Abu Dhar radiallahu anhuma, uh, which tells you that Rasulullah gave this advice to more than one person. Um, that tells you kind of like the beauty of this advice, which is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, uh, you know, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ هَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ يعني Have that fear of Allah. Have that remembrance that Allah sees you no matter where you are. And if you fall into a sin, follow it up with a good deed because a good deed erases the sin. Meaning that we're all going to fall short, but we don't, we don't, uh, yani, is it good? You there? Yeah, I'm good. Did, did, it, did I leave for a second? Yeah, you did. But yeah, I I could, it was weird. Okay. All right. So continuing with the beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is my advice because there's no better advice than that of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ هَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُ يعني Have the taqwa of Allah no matter where you are. So if you're young and you're watching, always remember that Allah sees you. Always remember that you're a Muslim, that it's not about your parents, it's not about your community, it's not about who sees you. It's about you and your creator. Hmm. So wherever you are, in school, in college, university, in uni, or whatever, Allah sees you. So and you have that taqwa of Allah that you don't, you don't sin you know, because you, it's not because, oh, my community is going to see me. It's because you know that Allah sees you. Yeah. You pray because Allah has ordained it. You know, if you have that relationship with Allah, that's the most important thing. And then secondly, and if you fall into a sin because we all make mistakes, don't, don't become my use. You know, don't become like this. Ajis in Arabic, they say, don't just be like, okay, forget it. I can't yeah. do it. It's too much. No, always turn back to Allah. And if you fall into a sin, go do some good deeds. Go make tawbah. Go give some sadaqah. Go make some extra salah so that Allah forgives your sin in lieu of the good deed that you did. And treat people with the best manners, you know. Uh, yeah, as a that's... man, uh, you know, you need to always have good character. The way you speak to people should should be a way of good character because that's what a man is. You know, as, as a woman, you need to have your good morals and character that Allah has given to women. Um, you know, if you see a man sometimes you know, speaking to an old man roughly or to their parents, you know, it just shows that they're they're weak, you know. The strong man always shows good character. The Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, even, you know, when we used to hang out with gang members, some of the most ruthless, gangster, big old, tatted, murderers, if they were in front of their mother or their father, they were like little kittens, you know, wow. because they had that respect. Uh, I mean... Uh, that that is a true man, you know, yeah. somebody who deals with people with good character, and that's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was known to have the best character. So those three pieces of advice in the hadith of Mu'adh radiyallahu, that's also the Prophet Budar radiyallahu anhu from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Have taqwa right. of Allah no matter where you are. Stick to good deed, but if you fall into a sin, follow it up with a good deed because it erases the sin, and deal with people in the best character. Stick to that. You get the, almost the whole religion here. Yeah. One thing you said about um, being nice towards people. Well, I, one thing I could tell from you when I went and I met you in Dallas, like you were so incredibly down to earth. Like you, I took a picture with you and then I think it came out bad or something. And I, I didn't, I was too scared to ask you again because I didn't want to, but you were <laughs> like, nah, take it again. It's fine. It's fine. And I, would, and I remember right. my friend that was with me, he was like, bro, if I ever become famous, just because I'm this interaction I had with Sheikh Uthman, the fact that he was treating people who are not maybe as big or as famous as Sneeko, who they're just regular human beings, he still treated them like we are we are him, you know? And that that no, means, Yeah, and that, that shows a lot and that the well, that means a lot too, because it shows me that if something was ever like ever happened to me in the future where I become big and I become famous, that's how I should treat people. So no, that I, I just want to know that genuinely treat, helped helped me a lot with that. Exactly, that's wonderful. Yeah, and again for us, uh, we we don't really hear think about who's big and who's small. To yeah. us, everybody's important, right? Yeah. I mean, I was speaking to a da'i and he was like, "Yeah, don't go on a any with podcasts unless they have I don't know like five million or something subscribers and this and that." I was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Like to us, 
like for you reached out i don't know how many subscribers you have i don't really care to i have honest, 100 right? that's it <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah great allah increased it to 100000 you know uh, yeah. but again that's the thing we didn't even ask like i never asked why it doesn't matter you're my muslim brother alhamdulillah mm -hmm. you're just as important uh, as as somebody with a million subscribers you know in the yeah. end to allah it's a quality right and yeah. when sneeko came to san diego alhamdulillah we treated him like everybody else you know we he invited him to the masjid. He sat in the dars like everybody else said. So, Alhamdulillah, he's our brother. We respect him just like any other brother we have that we respect. We yeah. love people for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of fame or their money or their popularity. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Uthman, I know you're tired. Yeah. That's all I have for you today. Wallahi, Sheikh, genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, thank you for coming on. I know like you are probably one of the only people that don't care about like numbers or any of that and you're willing to do podcasts or whatever so this, this help this is going to help me a lot just as much as going to help yeah. all the other people that are going to watch this when they when they listen to this so May allah increase your goodness and your da'wah and the most important thing just remember keep your ikhlas keep your sincerity for the sake of allah and you keep your tawadu keep your humbleness for the sake of allah uh and stick to the quran and sunnah and you don't don't sell out don't don't think that compromise will bring you popularity or anything like that and we ask allah to increase you uh, if it's good for you Inshallah. and bless you and make you a means of hidayah yeah. for others you the most like important it. thing for us is when somebody like you reaches out and says look i, I benefited from my iman increase yeah, or somebody yeah. reaches out and says yeah. i became muslim from watching your videos that that's what it's all about mm. the rest you know Popularity comes and goes. Yeah, Money I think comes and goes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful, Sheikh. But again, Sheikh, thank you so much. I know you have to get going, and I hope I can. I hope I can meet you again sometime, whenever, and we can connect Inshallah. again whenever you're back in Dallas or every time, I, if I'm in San Diego, whatever the case may be. Marhaban. Anytime you're here, you're our guest. Inshallah, you we see you somewhere else, and we'll see you there. Inshallah.